Now, someone talked about energy. I think Pat was making reference to innovation energy. And I have some guests with me today, and I'd like to introduce them at this part of my speech, because this is really a, a, a passion for me right now, and that is the energy security of our state. And we have energy security issues. And by security, I mean having the energy when we, when we need it, the form that we need it, and hopefully in a, in a range that we can afford long term. Uh, first, let me introduce a, a guest who's here from Washington, D.C. He's a great friend to Hawaii and to me. We signed a memorandum of understanding this week so that the United States Department of Energy will begin to provide substantial technical assistance to our state as we start to transition away from the concept that has existed, which is one major utility company similar to what Pat described as one phone company and that's it, and everybody kind of buys from that one company. There are going to be some dramatic changes, and we're going to be pushing for them in the years ahead. And he's been a big help to us. He's the Assistant Secretary of Energy for Energy Efficiency and for Renewable Energy for America, Assistant Secretary Andy Karsner. Andy? Andy has brought some of his team with him from the Department of Energy, and this is very important because it's a, a very large organization, and he is very dependent on his team, and, and we're getting to know them this week if they visit, as they visit us here. Can all the guys from the Department of Energy raise their hand who are here in the room today? Welcome to you guys. Uh, also, um, my director of business, economic development, and tourism, one of the most creative people ever been in government, Ted Liu. Ted, are you? There he is, Ted. <laughs> you know, I, I've never told this publicly, Ted, and I, I don't tell it to embarrass you, but uh, I, value, I value Ted so much. You know, after I won re-election and you want to go talk to the cabinet members and who's going to stay and who's not going to stay, and Ted left a, a very lucrative life to come into the government, and he was the last person in the cabinet to make a decision that he wanted to stay in the government. And he and I had some really deep philosophical discussions at that time, and it all revolved around whether or not he believed if he stayed for a second term would he really be able to have a significant impact on making life better for the people of Hawaii? And that was what he needed to convince himself of before he was willing to commit another four years of his life. And I think that's the exact question anyone in government needs to be asking when they're deciding, do I want to be in government or shall I go into business again or a nonprofit world? And I think as we talk that through, we believed it was certainly possible to continue to make a big difference, and it was really dependent upon us and those around us and our ability to motivate the community to join with us. And I believe Ted would tell you today he certainly has been uh, making a very big difference for the state, and I'm just very glad that he decided to stay. Now, why is energy on my mind so much? Uh, part of it is because of where our energy comes from. Hawaii is the most oil-dependent state in America. Not one of the most oil-dependent, not in the top 10 most oil-dependent. We are the number one most oil-dependent state in America. 90% of all of our energy comes from burning oil or coal. We have the highest utility rates in America and the highest gasoline prices. Today, drive around Maui, what is it, 387 for regular? We don't have among the highest utility rates in the country. We don't have the third highest, the tenth. We have the highest utility rates in the country. Now, if you've just come from where Secretary Karsner and I have come from, which is Kahiava Wind Facility, we just came down off the mountain, and Kent Smith is here today from Kahiava. You can't understand how could we possibly have the highest utility rates in America. The wind is free. It's blowing. 
I'm telling you, I had to go in the bathroom when I got here and wet my hair down. It was blowing so hard, and the assistant secretary, who comes out of the private sector, who was in the wind energy business, said there is not another site like this in the United States of America. And he will share that with you during question period if you have questions for him. So the technology exists for us to take control of our energy future. It exists for us to begin to stabilize and bring down the cost of energy. Investors are there to support these kind of projects. The entrepreneurs exist who are willing to take these kinds of risks for the rest of us. But we have to dramatically change the structure, the regulatory structure, the government structure that will allow us to take advantage of all of the natural resources that exist in Hawaii. We have the most diverse natural resources of any place on Earth. Solar, wind, geothermal, ocean energy, biofuel. A recent editorial in the Maui News said, the journey from policy to practice is worth taking no matter what probable hurdles arise. And this was about energy, and that's true. There are hurdles to overcome, but there are hurdles in everything you do in your business every day you wake up. And you have to decide how you're gonna go over the hurdle, you're gonna dig a tunnel, are you gonna go around it, are you gonna build a ladder next to it and climb up, how are you gonna get over that hurdle? And that's what we need to do in the field of energy. And we've made some progress, we have begun to initiate, begun a fundamental change in energy policy. When you look at your bill from Maui Electric Company, you have several things on your bill. You have a charge for the energy you actually use, and then you have the charge for the increase in the cost of oil. And this is the only place I can find in America that has a 100% pass through on the price of oil, the increase in the price of oil. So what does that mean? It means for the uh, utility that if oil goes up a dollar, ten dollars, fifty dollars, hundred dollars, it doesn't matter because we pay for it. They, they absorb none of the risk, zero. Some states have a pass through, a 20 percent pass through, a 30 percent pass through. Nobody has a 100 percent pass through and when you do the math of a 100% pass-through in a community that 90% of our energy comes from oil. And the next closest state to us, by the way, of fossil fuel use is Florida at 17%. So you can see the impact of the price of oil and this automatic pass-through. And what does it mean, too, when you have a 100% automatic pass-through? It means you have no incentive to move to renewables because you just pass it through to the consumers. Now I believe in working closely with Hawaiian Electric, we have begun to move them in a direction of recognizing that renewables are important to them as well. But it is made less clear when you have this 100% pass through. So on your bill, no matter what you do, no matter how you conserve, no matter what you tell your children and turn out the lights, your bill goes up. And you don't understand that it's because of the automatic pass-through. You also pay in your bill a certain percentage of a cent per kilowatt hour for energy. It's called for a public benefits fund. And that means that all those percentage of those kilowatt hours we all pay, tens of millions of dollars a year, have historically gone to the utility for conservation programs. But as I've told some of you before, giving our money to promote conservation to a company that makes its living selling kilowatt hours does not make any sense. It's a conflict of interest. And so we were able to get that issue before the PUC, and there is going to be now a, starting in about one year, a third party public benefits fund who will get that money now instead of the utility getting it, and their job, their only job, is to promote energy conservation among the citizens of the state. So we're making some progress, but we need to put the old ways aside, we need to put egos and politics aside, 
and we need to recognize that it doesn't make sense and it's not fair for us to continue to pay these energy prices when we have the most abundant natural resources perhaps anywhere in the world. So for the next three years, you're going to hear me continue to talk about this, and I hope as the Chamber starts to understand more clearly what some of the issues are, you will even appoint a separate committee, if you don't already have one, on this issue of energy independence, because that's truly what it is, and energy security. Imagine 90 percent of our energy is from importing oil, basically. Now, a lot of this oil comes from countries who sit around and plot our destruction, plot America's destruction. But we're dependent on them for oil. So we have a lot of reasons to want to move away from this current structure that we have to this new structure. And everyone in this room could be a big help to us.